Hey, good morning, Fountain of Life. I'm finally back. Um, hey, I just want to say hello to everyone, and it's good to be back in the saddle. It's so good to be back with you, Fountain of Life. What I thought I would do today is to do a family talk as a way of getting back into the saddle and setting us up for some exciting things this fall. Um, I've got some exciting things to update you about, some things I want you to pray about. Um, and some things that we're going to do to build greater solidarity. First, let me just start by saying um, the hearts of so many of us um, in America are grieving over the Breonna Taylor decision. Um, you know, if there is a national, if, there, if, there, if there's a hurricane or a flood, um, bad tornado somewhere in the country, we talk about it. Say, let's pray for the East Coast. Let's pray for Arizona. Let's pray for the we're really in a national crisis. And, um, and I don't bring it up for purposes of being divisive. It's just, these are just such difficult times. And I know that it's not just our African-American people, particularly African-American women, who are suffering or feeling so invisible right now, but we feel it with you and we, we're standing in solidarity. And as a ministry, um, we're not just going to say, that's horrible. We're going to lean in to leaders in our church and find out what more do we need to be doing to support our black women. Um, so often when we think about police brutality, we think about many of the things that are happening in this country. We think about our black men. And I want us to really think about our sisters as well. And uh, we're going to lean into people who have expertise in this area, like Reverend Lalade, and just find out what more can we be doing in the community and as a way of outreach and support. But um, we just want to be we just want to be mindful to be prayerful for her, for her family, for just the whole thing. I've got friends who are pastors in that area. Um, they are police officers who think that um, those officers should have been charged. Not every officer thinks, "Oh, good, they got off." So it's just such a time of turmoil. Let's be prayerful. Let's find safe places to vent, to vet. But let's just be prayerful that God's will will continue to override people's hearts and that God will bring a great sense of change to us. Um, I just wanted to, to just to acknowledge that these are tough times, but God's people are tough people. And we want God to shape us to be a witness and a prophetic voice during these times. Um, I've got a list of things um, because my mind is slow to get back from vacation, so I don't want to leave things out. But I just want to say that it was a nice time away. I normally take four weeks away from the office away from the computer. So I was really only gone for two, two and a half weeks, but I was out of the pulpit for more time than that. Um, but it was good to have time just to chill. So um, I bought a bike. And so I'm getting out on the trails and I'm riding. I want to get this heart stronger. I want to get this waist weaker. Um, and um, I just want to just enjoy being outside and, and, and more connected with nature. Um, and I just need some, some really good time, some really good ways of, of just getting rid of the stress. Another fun thing that I did um, during the time when I was off is I played a mystery game. It was really fun for Pastor Jackie and I to, to have some fun doing things. We got away for a couple of days. We got up to Door County. That was so wonderful. Um, but we played this murder mystery game with about 10 other couples. And we spent one Saturday evening, and it was, it was just fun. I think I've got a picture. Um, I was Southside Sal from Chicago, and, um, and she was the little sister of Northside Nick. And, um, and, yeah, and he was my nemesis, and here I am dating his little sister. But it was, just, it was just fun. You know, we do so much serious stuff that it was just good to be goofy. And we've been watching sports, 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 basketball and tennis, basketball and tennis. Um, Pastor Jackie is really enjoying it. Some days I feel like she left me for, um, for basketball and tennis. So it's just good to recalibrate, to have a chance to relax um, and just um, exhale. So it was good to have that time off. I really appreciate it, uh, which reminds me, I'm so appreciative for the preachers and the leaders who stepped up for me. So all of you who preached, you know, Eric Porter, Tyler, LaShawn, uh, I believe Harry Hawkins, um, uh, Pastor Kevin, other folks. I just, I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. And um, so thank you. Thank you. Um, th for this next little segment of my family talk, I just want to say my gratitude for Fountain of Life's administrative team. 
I'm appreciative particularly for Sister Kim Graffenauer and Sister Tracy Russell, um, who have just been holding things down in the office. Um, we, we're not back to full office schedule yet, and they have certain days for being in. But since the pandemic hit, they have been making sure that um, we can respond to, to, to needs of people in our congregation, um, that uh, mail is being picked up from the P.O. box, that your checks and donations are being processed, that we're communicating with you. We talk a lot about the ministry things that are happening, but these folks are the glue. Um, Sister Kim is going to be uh, vacating her position as one of um, one of our leaders in our in our office because she's going to grad school. She's working on her master's in social work, her MSSW. Some schools call them MSW. They leave out one of the S's. But um, Sister Kim, we are so proud of you, so grateful for you. Um, we know that you're going to put that social work um, degree to good use. You're actually getting a degree to just underscore the things you've already been doing. Um, remember that other thing that we talked about, Sister Kim. Remember that other thing we need to think about as well. But um, you're just such a valued member of our team, and I appreciate you so much. Um, even as I'm here recording, um, I'm just thinking you have you, you've just contributed so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Minister Tracy, we're going to find you some help. We're not going to leave you out there by yourself. This is also a way of hey, if you have some administrative skills and you're really good and strong at it, reach out to, to Minister Tracy or Pastor Jackie because we need to get someone um, to fill Sister Kim's shoes. I also want to say thank you to Mother Lola. Even though she's one of our senior members and just because of a number of things probably should not be out, um, she has been in the office making sure that reimbursements and things like that have been taken care of. Uh, Mother Lola has been a part of my staff for about 30 years. Um, she predates all my pastors, um, except for just a few, maybe like Pastor Jackie and uh, Reverend Laleda. But Mother Lola, we appreciate you. I love you so much, and thank you for your diligence. This woman's been volunteering, and she'll call in um, like she's on the payroll. Like, can I, I, I want to go to a family reunion, or I need to do this. I just want to let the office know. I love you, Mother Lola. Um, so I want to let you all know this. I spoke last, last week at the Young Adult Ministry. I really appreciate Reverend um, Sean and Minister Alley of the, your leadership in, in serving our young adults. You all just, I'm so, so proud of you. Um, and I know, um, Alexandra, Minister Alley, you, you're running with things somewhat alone um, as, as Sister Sean takes a break and steps back. But I saw about 20 young adults, and you know, these are folks like 21, you know, through their late 30s perhaps. Um, sitting there in the parking lot, socially distant. They had really good distance. But it was a week after the anniversary, I think maybe like the 30, um, 33rd anniversary of, um, of coming to this site to worship. And a bunch of 20-year-olds, me and Jackie and Fred Bobo, came and negotiated with the owners of this building, Calvary, and said, we're a young ministry. We want to do great things in the community. We need space for worshiping. And I sat, I stood there talking with the young adults. And I remember coming out of the building after the meeting with Calvary. It was Labor Day in 1987. I remember because it was Pastor Jackie's birthday. Labor Day fell on her birthday that year as well. And I said to Jackie and Fred, I hear the spirit of the Lord telling me that God is going to do something so tremendous on this land that there's going to be traffic jams on Badger Road. And at our Justified Anger Town Hall meeting, we saw that. Um, we saw that in other places, we're going to continue to see that. Watch, we're going to see that. And so to, to stand in the place where that prophecy was proclaimed and to see these young adults sitting on the same parking lot, it was a reminder to me. Um, God is, is, is perpetuating the vision. and He's bringing new and um, talented and younger people to continue this vision. And that makes me very deeply proud and appreciative. So I made a commitment to young adults that I'm going to make sure that as we begin, as we're, as we begin to think about the future of Fountain of Life, how and when we come back and all of those things, that I want to make sure that special attention is given to the development of young leaders, development of unconventional leaders. Um, that is my commitment. I gave them my word and I mean that. And that means a commitment to young adults um, finding leaders among our youth as well. Um, Layla, Cabrin, young folks who have grown up in this ministry. We've got to begin to 
groom folks like you, um, Caleb, others, Josiah. We've got to be able to groom folks, um, quad, and, and we have to groom you. I think you just graduated. But, but for, leader, for leadership um, in this ministry, in your school, and in the community. And so I'm so appreciative. Let me see if there's anything else by way, church update. We have a standing and solidarity team. And these are non-African American members in our congregation who have committed themselves to understanding all that's going on in our world. What does it mean when we say Black Lives Matter? Um, and I so appreciate this team. I don't want to steal their thunder. Um, I want to talk with them or have them talk some, at some point about why they have chosen to do this. Um, but I just want to say to have non-African American folks, and the majority of this team are, 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 are white individuals, Euro, European American individuals, who have really leaned in to allyship. And you're realizing you're in an African American led multicultural church. And rather than bombarding me and other black leaders with, well, why and how is it? And why do you think? But you're educating yourselves, you're studying justice. Um, and you have said to me and other African American influencers in this church, We've got your back. I have not always felt that way in different seasons and phases of our ministry, that our non-black people have my back the way the African-American people do. But you all said it before I could fully articulate that question or allow that seed of doubt to grow. Um, and I will never forget that. Um, and it's not just because I'm black, but you respect the leadership mantle um, that God has given me, but my perspective and, and you have stated that you feel that we've helped to prepare non-black people for knowing how to um, navigate these kinds of times by understanding our perspective, standing in solidarity. I feel like you're um, Aaron and, um, and her. Um, I feel like you all and my staff and our prayer team are like, I like those folks keeping my arms up um, while I battle for, for our ministry and for our vision. And I appreciate you so, so much. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Um, just a few updates on, on things that are, going, that are going on in the body. Um, Sister Doreen Johnson, who has been a part of our ministry for years, went home to be with the Lord. Um, she's had a battle with so many illnesses. Um, and, and even when they called, they reached out to us and said, we think she might be going. Some of us just thought, nah, they told us that before about, about Doreen and she fought it. Um, but this time she, she went in, she, she went on into the arms of, the arms of Jesus. She went on into her eternal rest. And, um, but I appreciate her. Um, during was funny, she was a surf in a choir. Um, I remember baptizing her. And um, she and Daniel have been a part of our family, her son, for so, so long. And so Sister Doreen, we're gonna miss you, even though you have not been able to physically be with us, you have kept in touch with us through social media. And um, enjoy your rest, sister. And, uh, I'm glad that you're in a place where there's no more limitations physically for you and that your body is finally free of pain and illness. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that uh, my sister, Laleda, um, has just really been growing in her notoriety as a street artist. Um, she's always drawn since she was a little kid, but picked it back up recently, made a Facebook post last year that, hey, I'm, a, I'm coming out, I'm, I'm an artist, I've been hiding it. Immediately, people started asking her questions. It went to mugs and shower curtains, and she got a little space on Society6. But in the last several months, she's been called on by city leaders to create art for um, some of the destroyed windows downtown, um, um, the big jewelry store, um, Goodman Jewelers. Um, she has work that's, going, that's, that's displayed um, on, the, on the outside of the Overture Center. And um, she has recently been on the cover, uh, solo cover, her own space, on Bravo Magazine as an artist and an activist. She's recently met with our Senator Tammy Baldwin to talk about what she's doing. I was just in a meeting with her and with her, Laleda and the mayor and others, and we we're introducing ourselves and Laleda introduced herself and the mayor said, and a very excellent artist. And so it's just great how God is opening up doors for his people, our people, to influence the city and the community. It's interesting, um, some women who are part of Covenant have been watching Laleda's art from afar and they knew she was downtown painting. They fried chicken, made some blackberry cobbler, put some ice cream on ice and drove from Chicago to her site and had a picnic 
on State Street with Laleda and her artistic team. They said, we just want to sit in solidarity with you and watch you do what you do. We were watching from Chicago, and we said, we, have, we got to go support this sister. And so that's just, that's just very exciting. I love it um, when God shows all facets of his people, that we can work in the legal and the educational uh, and the criminal justice arenas, but we can be artists and poets and things like that, too. So that's very exciting. Thirdly, along that line, just want you to know that my podcast, Black Like Me, has just been nominated as one of the top um, Wisconsin podcasts. Um, they're still counting ballots, I suppose. I um, um, hope the Russians don't get involved. But, um, but people have been voting for me. Uh, people have nominated the podcast. We now have over 112 episodes that are posted. We have just ended season four, and we're doing prep for season five. So shout out to my team um, for this excellent, excellent work. People are listening in over 80 countries and every state of the union. All right, man, this time is going by so quickly. Um, other things, let's see, got that, I got that. Oh, to, um, I just want to say congratulations to some members of our young adult um, 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 ministry, Troy and Nakia King, that they, they are the parents of a brand new son, little Troy. I think he's Troy the third. And um, he was born at St. Mary's Hospital not long ago. We are glad that baby and that mom are doing well. We are so glad. Um, and thank you for letting your Fountain of Life family, family know. Uh, let's see what else do I have on my list. Oh, okay. Well, I'm getting through everything. I'm meaning to get through pretty much. Um, so much of the work that we were doing around our cultural center slowed down because of COVID, what was happening nat you know, nationally, um, strategizing about how we're going to think about the funding. And, and so there hasn't been a lot to update you on. But in the midst of all this turmoil, I think right after the George Floyd situation, some of the white members on the team, um, actually our former county executive, Rick Phelps, called me and said, Alex, it's time to dust these plans off. We need to do something that's definitive. We need to do something that brings a sign of hope. And there's a need, a need for the celebration and the acknowledgement of African-American history, black history, and the contributions of black people to the world. It's time to get this center built. And I'm overwhelmed by COVID-19, its impact on black people, and what's happening in the media with black folks and brutality. I didn't feel like I, I was in the headspace to, to, to think positively and to act so in um, uh, such a big way. But something about what he said resonated in my heart. And so I don't know if you saw it. Um, we'll send a link around to you. I'm going to try to put a photo right here right now. Um, but we've changed the name to the Center of Black Excellence and Culture. And the reason we changed it from African American to black is because there is a need for strong pan-Africanism in the world today. And so that's connecting people of Africa, particularly folks in West Africa, the Caribbean, and in North America, connecting us to tell our collective stories. And I believe that having been in Ghana in fall of 2018 touched my heart, and I've never felt more proud to be of African descent because I heard about Africa's prowess through the eyes of Africans, through the mouths of Africans, and not my white educators. It was a completely different story, and it changed me forever. And so we've been hearing back from members of, of the African community, the West African community, people from Ghana and Cameroon, who really appreciate the fact that we're going to work on coming together. And as we strengthen ourselves and tell our stories and educate our children, there will be room and space to make sure that others who are not of African descent, sorry, um, are not African descent to come and learn about how our contributions have influenced your lives personally. We're tired of the negative narrative, the sad narrative. We want to tell the powerful, beautiful, strong narrative. And so um, you'll be hearing more about this in the media. The, the Hebing Group is a major marketing firm. They have donated $200,000 worth of marketing services. They're going to create the website so we can have a landing page so people can donate in the brochures. They're training me on how to do um, interviews with the media. They're writing up the press releases. 
They're about to shake their heads and say there must be a God. There's no way they can pull this off. That's the word the Lord gave me a little over 40 years ago, that I'm going to do something on that hill that's going to make them shake their heads. They, the world, say there must be a God. There's no way they can do this. I want you to know God is at work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is at work. And so I'm excited. More to come. I've got to raise, we've got to raise $18 million. That is not on Fountain of Life. That's on the community. But we've got to begin thinking bigger. Um, when we come out of something like a pandemic, we cannot think small. We must think big and bold, something that is God-sized. Because people don't want to go to the same old way of doing things. I'm excited about the Center Prayer Team. I need y'all praying all over this church. I need you praying all over it. Um, if you want to be on the mailing list um, of, of all of this, uh, we'll just know. We'll put, you, we'll put you on the mailing list. But we're going to need people to serve on certain committees and help us to think about this and dream about this. Fountain of Life, I want, I need you to be involved, and I need young people, young people, young children born in this church. If your children were born here and they're, they're adults, I need them. Roman, Jordan, Lexi, Lil John, Cassandra, Marie, Monique, Lil Rod, others, others, um, Diane Johnson, Sister Diane Johnson, your kids, we need the children who are born in this church or grew up in this church to speak into this effort. It's going to change not just South Madison, not just Badger Road in Madison. This is going to be a national model. We are going to hire national consultants. We're going to work with people who shaped the African American Museum in D.C. That's my desire. This is going to be world class. Of course, new office space for the church, new office space for Nehemiah. But it's going to be a gathering hub that's going to change the trajectory of um, of, of the black narrative in our community. Can't wait. Um, and the last point I have on here is it's October. It's not just football season. Come on, Jerome. Come on, Coop. Don't get mad. I know I was born in Chicago, but come on. Um, it's fall. So it's not just football. It's not just pretty leaves. It's not just um, getting ready for winter. It's also time for Oktoberfest. I'm feeling hungry already. Oktoberfest. Let me tell you something. Oktoberfest, if you have not been around Fountain of Life, it is something that has galvanized us for close to 30 years. Every October we fast and we turn our faces to God in fasting and prayer. And we ask the Lord, we ask the Lord, show us something, free us from something, take us somewhere beyond our strength, but communicate, connect with us. It's a chance to reconnect. If your prayer time and your faith and your scripture reading have fallen off, October is a cent at the time to reconnect, as is Lent, as is Lenten season, as we as we move up to to, to um, Resurrection Sunday early next year. But right now, this is a period to stop and just say, "Take me back, God." And let me tell you what the theme of this is: It's Lord, prepare us for revival. You know what's been coming out of my spirit as I've been preaching the last several months is that all of this craziness that's happening in our world is setting us up for a revival. That we don't know what to do, as Jehoshaphat said in old time, in the old time, in Old Testament. But our eyes are on you. Let me tell you something. When all you know what breaks loose, I think all of heaven is about to break loose, and I think the enemy wants to distract us from what God is about to do. But in my spirit, I feel like a revival is coming in. What's the revival? Well, we're going to learn about that. But it's not just um, we're going to have a good Hallelujah Sunday. A revival. It's when God captures people's hearts outside the church, inside the church. People have these dramatic conversions. They have dreams and visions and, and um, things that tell them that Jesus is real and it's time to commit themselves to God. It's a time of true awakening. Um, people who have not been part of church, part of faith, turn and come to God. I believe that it's going to happen worldwide. I don't think that we're coming out of, this, out of all of this craziness just for a good election. <clears throat> I don't think an election regardless of how it goes, is going to fix things immediately. God is still Lord of everything, and God wants to do something through the church, and the church has been part of the problem. And so we're going to learn about revivals that have happened around the world, revivals that um, have come out of Africa, revivals that were led by women, revivals um, that have been led by disenfranchised and poor people. We're going to understand how what I'm talking about has really happened. It's not just 
you know, like we grew up where revivals where you bring in a preacher, a guest, um, um, evangelist, and they have like a three night meeting, you know, like, I got saved in a revival, or I got healed in a revival. Revival is not a three week meeting that's held inside your church. It is the move of God. It is heaven opening its doors and falling and just like sp spraying down on earth. We need it. We need it. We need it. So we're going to learn about historic revivals. We're going to, I'm going to preach about revivals. We're going to pray for revival, that God will touch and save and change people's hearts. Many of the revivals came in very dark moments, and people cried out to God. Some of them were political and social, and they cried out to God, and God showed up. I believe that if we cry out to God and stop complaining, as my grandmama would say, stop poking out our mouths like this it is. That's poking out your mouth. Like, stop poking out your mouth. Take your face down. I think the church has been poking out his mouth and got his face down. Old folks would say, take your face down. Tuck your mouth in. Now talk to me so I can hear you. Oh, it's time for us to talk to the Father. And not about our agenda, but pray, not my will, yours be done. Not my will, yours be done. Not my will, yours be done. Because even when things are crazy and haywire, God is still on the throne. And I think sometimes we give too much credibility to political figures, systems, realities, and they affect us. But you all, we were told. Father told us. Savior told us. Spirit told us there would be days like this. So we're going to pray. And um, the communications team is working to put all the materials on your FOL app. Come on now. We rolled in like that. Those of you who are like, who oh, I don't have the app and don't download it, get it, download it, get it. But we'll have things printed and ready for those who have trouble getting things online. But get that app because there's going to be an area of prayer focus. Um, it's just going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. So um, communications team, I really appreciate you. Um, Kamala, Jakesha, John, Kim, Pastor Brian, thank you all for the work that you're doing on there. Jakesha, again, the app is beautiful. You can watch the services on the app, but you can also get your fast guide on the app and on the website. Um, we'll have some things to distribute first Sunday. Please remember that we do outside services every first Sunday of the month. So there will be one October 5th. I believe the first one in November is November 1st. Um, and we're going to see about December. Come on, we can go outside for an hour to cut down trees. No, don't we? And so um, we're working on something very exciting um, with live streaming from the church on other Sundays. So if you've got some creative ideas, email us at the office. Email us and say, well, what if we did service like this? Um, so just know that you don't have to ask, are we doing service? And if you have the app, we'll communicate with you. If we ever call off anything on a first Sunday because of the inclement weather, it's another good reason to have the app because we can communicate with you like that. All right. Last thing I want to say, Mark 4 contains a story of where Jesus says probably some of his most quoted words, peace, be still. Um, he had told the disciples, let's go to the other side. They got in a boat. Jesus took a nap because he was tired. Jesus probably was, Jesus probably took August off too. So it's probably August. He was on the back of the boat sleeping. Storm arose. Some of these folks are fishermen. They are used to storms. And said, Master, Master, wake up. Jesus, wake up, wake up. Ain't you scared? Wake up, wake up. Because they were scared. Jesus woke up and said, Peace, be still. He rebuked the wind and the waves. Then he turned to them and said, Why did you not have faith? The purpose of that trip and the lesson continues, was to demonstrate to those who would follow him, those who would preach him with their very lives. What I mean by that is preach him even when it meant being killed for that message. They had to know who they were working with. And so they needed to know that he wasn't just a good looking carpenter who had good training, and who had made their tables, heck, maybe their boats, but he was really God among us, God in the flesh. And they needed to know that he could make the winds and the waves stop as if they were naughty children playing on the furniture. Hey, I think that's the way my friend Ken Geyer wrote it in one of his moments with the Savior series. He just spoke with such authority. Hey, sit down. Be still. 
But then once Jesus dealt with the elements, hey, wind, hey, waves, then he turned to the disciples. And he said, you need to be stilled too, don't you? He dealt with the elements. He asked them why they lacked faith. Have faith in me, I'm with you. Then he goes on to Gadara to show that he's got power over demonic forces too. But in this part with, in the boat with the followers, his followers, he said, peace be still. Why didn't you have faith? I want you to know that we've been praying to Jesus. We're, we've been praying to Jesus. Change things, fix things, move people, bring people. And Jesus will work on the winds and the waves. But disciples of Jesus, beautiful people, a fountain of life, I want you to know, Jesus is going to work on the thing, but Jesus is fixing. Let me just say it like this. Jesus is finna work on us too. In this fast, we are not trying to manipulate God. We're not trying to quote things three times and make God go a different direction. Like God didn't know what to do, which way do we go, what do we do? God is God. God is older than the sun and the stars and the seas. It's the same old God. And we've been praying and asking and begging and lamenting and tweeting and texting. God fix things. But in this fast, we're asking God, prepare us for revival. Search my heart. Search my mind. Align me with what you're doing. Ready me for a trajectory I've never dreamed of. Church, we got to go in a direction. we got to move in ways we've never thought about, that the church is not done in this way in such a long time. And Fountain of Life, as we have been, we will most likely continue to be thought leaders in this area. So I need my women, my men, my children fasting. I need them fasting. I need them fasting. I need you to talk to your children. Um, they need to do some element of this. They need to understand in times like these, baby, we turn to the Lord because they may not experience times like this again. I'm 56. I've never experienced times like this. My mom is 81. She's never experienced times like this. And she's been through wars. Let me be, let me be biblical. And rumors of wars. We need to turn to God. And people need to know we stop. And we turn ourselves to the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy and let your will be done. But then we also pray, align me with what you're doing. I'm telling you, God is trying to aim the church to be effective in the world. Right now we're an eye sore. We're an ear sore. People don't see us as relevant. And our God deserves better than that. So, Lord, prepare us for revival. Prepare us for the revival you're wanting to bring to Madison, to the Internet, to the unchurched, to the lost, to the sick, to the hurting, to the broken, to the discouraged, to the overlooked, to the abused and the abuser, the killed and the killer. Oh, God, let your will be done in us. So we're fasting. If you've never done it before, I want you to do it. We're going to have the guide. And listen, if you have, if you, we'll talk about all of this next week. But if you have medical um, limitations, you don't have to follow this, follow this to the T. This is not a diet. It's just a way of turning our attention away from what we normally do when we're frustrated. Where we normally go. When we're frustrated, what we normally do when we're frustrated, we want to just watch those things. Feel what's in there, but call on Jesus. When I was a kid, the old folks used to sing, if you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. Brother George, you might have to sing a little bit of that outside at the service. They would say, if you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer if you call him, if you call him. He will answer prayer if you call him, if you call him. He will answer prayer. He will answer us. When we turn to him, Jesus himself even said, look, y'all, some of this stuff won't be fixed except by prayer and fasting. So guess what? We're about to get stuff fixed because we finna fast and pray. Hey, I love you all. I appreciate you. My time is up. Um, Enjoy this day. Continue the Sabbath. Pray for someone. Call someone. Go for a walk. Process this message. Um, meet us in the parking lot 
on first Sunday. That's next Sunday. Meet us in the, we have room. We'll park you on the grass. We, listen, we broadcast to an FM station. So if you don't want to get out of your car, it's just great seeing people. So we've got room. We've got more room. And so come on, come on, come on. So listen, be safe. It's good to be back with you. We're going to fast and seek the Lord's face. We're going to ask God for revival. We're going to read and learn about revival. And we're going to experience a move of God that is necessary to take us into the full will and plan of God in this season. Fountain of life. We've been raised up for such a time as this. The book of Proverbs says, you know, the fountain, you know, the revelation of God is a fountain of life. And the reverence or the, and the worship of God is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. We are meant to remind people that revelation and, and reverence, understanding God and responding to God is a fountain of life, turning us from the traps of death, fountain of life. We're going to live. We're going to live big in Christ. All right. I love you all so much. I look forward to seeing you in the parking lot next week. Be blessed.